Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Stealth Hitch Hitch Receiver on a 2016 BMW X5M. Now this is going to be available in two different configurations. So if you plan on towing a trailer, you are going to want to pick up the towing package as it uses its own ball mount and you can't just hook up to the normal rack receiver. It also includes the wiring to allow you to have your seven pole as well as four pole. If you're just planning on using it for bike racks and cargo carriers, the standard rack receiver kit is going to work right for you. Now this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed and you may say, well, where is it? And that's why it lives up to the name Stealth Hitch. It lives underneath here, and that's great for something especially like this X5M because this is a sporty vehicle, but it still has usability if you're trying to get your bike rack or cargo carrier or even pull a trailer without taking away from any of the aesthetics of the vehicle. Now the basic rack receiver kit is going to have this attachable two inch receiver tube and that way when you're ready to load up your cargo carrier bike racks you can just simply twist the handle back, pop this in place, and then you're able to load up your accessories. You can even lock this and that way no one can walk away with your receiver tube opening. Now when you do put your accessories in place, it's going to use a 5 8 pin and clip. It's not included with this. A lot of times your accessories will come with one, but if you also want to grab a locking pin and clip to keep your bike rack in place, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. Now this is rated at a 600 pound tongue weight, which when it comes to a cargo carrier bike rack would take quite a bit to overload that. So you're gonna be able to get all your accessories in place. Now, when it comes to choosing your accessory, making sure you have ground clearance is important. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground is gonna be 14 inches. And also the pin and clip hole is actually further out than the rear fascia, which is really nice. That way, if you do plan on keeping your accessories on here and they're folding ones, you should have that clearance to be able to not make contact with the fascia. Now, as far as opening up your hatch, that may or may not come into play, but something you'll want to look at. Now, when you are done, you'll just twist that handle and this will pop out. And this one's rated at, an, it's an 8,000 pound ball, but the hitch is rated at 6,000 pounds. Um, the tongue weight is still gonna be 600. You are gonna want to stick to that uh, and also check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's rated at towing and that way you're not overloading it. But same thing, just as you would the rack receiver, you just pop your ball mount in place. And as far as hooking up safety chains, not to worry, you do have those loops tucked back here, so you still have a nice solid mounting point. So a standard S-style hook works really well. A larger clevis style, it is a little tight here, but it is still doable. So depending on what safety chains you may have on your trailer, something to keep in mind. Now included is a two inch BMW ball, so it's really nice. Um, and it, this one looks really great, but if your trailer is an inch and seven eighths or a two and five sixteenths, you can pick that up separately. Does not come with a kit. And this one we did have to torque on. So uh, you'll be using a torque wrench in the installation. You are gonna wanna have that handy to get this torqued into place. Now, as far as making sure it works with your trailer from the top of the ball, uh, we are kind of stuck in a rise position. We can't flip that around. We're looking at a 19 inches uh, as far as that ground clearance. And you do have a decent amount of distance between the ball and the fascia. So from the center of the ball to the fascia is looking at about five inches. So you should be able to get that trailer coupler here without causing any damage to your fascia. The towing kit also comes with seven pole wiring uh, that allows you to get all your turn functions as well as if you ever wanted to add a brake controller. Now, not to worry if your trailer has a four pole. It actually comes with an adapter here that you just plug this in and then your four pole end is here. So no matter your trailer, you should be able to hook up to this. Now, if you don't plan on using accessories all that much and you kind of just want your clean look, but still protect your hitch, you do get this rubber cap that comes with it. So this is just gonna keep any of that road grime or water out of here. And that way, when you are ready to use your hitch, you can simply pop this out and then it's gonna be nice and clean, allowing you to get your receiver or your ball mount in place. Now that also continues on um, for where the key slot is that has a rubber cap on it. So again, that's gonna be protected, keeping your hitch in good condition. Now, as far as installation goes, this one's a little bit more involved than your typical installation, uh, mostly because this bolts in where your original bumper beam was. So the fascia does have to come off and the BMWs are 
put together very well. So you do kind of have to work a little bit at it, pull some taillights out, but overall it's not too bad. And even the wiring, uh, it's a really nice kit. It's set up super easy and the instructions are really fantastic. So if you're following along with the instructions, uh, also follow along with our install and that way we can get your stealth hitch installed. To get your hitch installed, we're gonna start by opening up our rear hatch and we're gonna pull out these panels and that way we can gain access to the nuts that are holding on the taillights as we'll need to remove those for our fascia. So to get these out, pretty easy. And we'll do this on both sides and that's gonna give us access to the eight millimeter nuts holding the taillight on. They're gonna be a little bit tricky to see, but uh, go ahead and grab your socket. So before we take our nuts off, we are gonna separate the taillight plug. So just kind of push in on this tab and get that to separate. And then our eight millimeters are right here. Now, if you want, you can pull back this insulation. Make sure you don't drop these because they are pretty small. And so we'll go ahead and get these removed. And throughout the process, anything that we remove, I would want to make sure that you have a nice organized spot to have all this. That way, reinstallation goes a lot easier. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now to get our tail light out, we can kind of wiggle this back and forth. Sometimes it does take some prying, but you're going to want to make sure that you don't uh, crack your tail light or damage your paint. So using a plastic trim tool is definitely helpful. Um, something else that I kind of do to help this along is those studs that we took the nuts off from previous. You can kind of push on that to kind of give it a little bit forward movement. So just take your time here and we'll go ahead and get both the tail lights removed. Now we can go ahead and set our taillights aside. Once the taillights are pulled out, you're gonna see there's an eight millimeter screw here. So we'll go ahead and get those removed on both sides. Now here on our wheel wells on the rear side, there's gonna be these three uh, plastic rivets. Now these, well, there's replacements that come in the kit. So we'll need to pry these off uh, as there is a screw behind these wheel well liners. So to get these popped off, you can drill out the center. Sometimes that works, I think, a little bit better. Um, or I'm using a trim panel tool here uh, to just kind of pry on these. And just with a little bit of force, they should pull out pretty easily. So go ahead and get those three removed and then you can repeat on the other side. Now the main thing is, even if there's portions left, uh, just as long as that head comes off, that should make it uh, able for us to pry this back. Now there are clips along here. Uh, you can probably get these with your hand, but if you need to, you can use a plastic trim tool. Kind of just work your way up slowly here. So I am gonna end up using my trim panel tool to just kind of wedge here. And we'll start at the bottom and get our first clip. Now you're gonna be using a trim panel tool quite a bit on this installation. So if you're gonna wanna pick one up, uh, just to make sure you don't scuff anything. We do have these available here at eTrailer and they're really nice to have for any interior work or any painted parts. Um, so it might be worth picking up. Now using my trim panel tool, I kind of pried in here and the clip is just kind of being finicky. So just again, take your time and you can see here, this is kind of where it pushes in. So if you can wedge that trim panel tool in to kind of push that tab down, that's gonna allow you to pry this out. And if you're worried about your paint, you can put a little painter's tape on the edges where you're prying. The plastic tools are pretty good about not scratching. Um, so we'll just go ahead and continue going up. It should be a little bit easier now that we have the one. And we're just going up far enough to gain access to our eight millimeter screw that's here. Um, you don't want to pry too hard on these because uh, it can damage the paint. And once you crease this, it's not really going to be able to be salvaged and you don't want to damage your vehicle uh, while getting your hitch on. So what I'll do now is take my eight millimeter socket and get this removed. And just to help us on the eventual removal of the fascia, if you have some paper towels or a rag or something that you can kind of just wedge in this top part just to give us that clearance so we can move the fascia out. Move this, move this up, you can see there's another clip up there. Um, but just kind of have this like that. And then what we're also gonna do is put some painter's tape on the edge of the fascia. That way, as we're putting the fascia on and removing it, uh, as these rub against each other, this will help protect it. Now with that taped up, we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same steps on the other side. 
Now, if you're following along with the instructions as well as this video, being that this is an M model, you do have that sport bumper, so it is a little bit different. And the reflectors are definitely one of the first things you'll notice. Now, on a lot of the BMWs, you will need to remove those. I'm not 100% sure yet if we have to. I don't think we do, um, but if we will, I'll show you that. Now, we will be removing the screws on the bottom. So we're just gonna kinda go along this outside edge. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll get those removed with an eight millimeter. Now we're going to get ready to pull our fascia off. Now a few things, you're going to want an extra set of hands because the bumper is going to get pretty cumbersome and you're also going to want to work from the outside in and have a place set up. Now something else, you're probably going to have some electrical components attached to it so don't just pull the bumper off. You're going to want to have someone support that while separating. So as we kind of pry on the outside here, we should get these plastic clips to start popping off. And these plastic clips, you're just going to want to kind of push down on those tabs. And as you have pressure along as you go, just pry in here and slowly pull. We should get it to separate fairly easily. Now, there are some tabs along here, kind of underneath our little uh, tailgate. So you will need to pry those. They recommend using an Allen key to kind of pry them uh, to get these to pop out. I don't think we're gonna have an issue here. Um, so we're gonna just kind of slowly pull on our face and see if we can't get it to separate. And there's also clips along this inside edge. So I actually ran some painter's tape between the tailgate here and the fascia. That way, as we're prying again, we just don't wanna have paint to paint contact. Now on our passenger side, we do have a wire that's gonna be attached to our fascia. So I'm gonna separate this. Tab is on the top here, so we're just gonna press that and separate this plug. There we go. Now we can set our fascia aside so we're safe. So we need to remove our fascia support. It's just gonna be this plastic piece here and there is probably gonna be wiring attached to it that can stay plugged in. We're just gonna have this tucked off to the side and that's gonna allow us to get our bumper beam off. And it's just gonna be a series of 10 millimeter nuts here. It looks like on our driver's side here, we have four of them. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. You'll see the plastic part kind of snaps into this center support. So you can just kind of pop that out. A little tab that you might be able to reach on the bottom to push up. There we go. So you can see where that's where that clips in. And this should just kind of pull out from the studs. And again, we can leave this attached. So if you want to, you can uh, zip tie this up so it's not putting stress on the wire. Uh, and that way it's just out of the way. And then we're gonna just repeat on the other side of the vehicle. Now we're gonna go on our passenger side of our bumper beam and you'll see that there's a plastic pushpin that's holding our wire harness in. So we'll just pry this out as this will be. Uh, well, our beam is gonna be removed so we wanna make sure that we don't have this attached. There's also these plastic caps uh, potentially on your top studs. And then you can just go ahead and get these unthreaded. It just kinda uh, go onto these little edges here. Now we are gonna be trimming these, so keep these handy and I'll show you where we're gonna trim them. So just like going to the barbershop, just a little off the top here, about a quarter of an inch is gonna allow uh, for these to go back into place when we have our hitch installed uh, because that hitch is gonna be sitting right where that bumper beam was, so we need to notch off just a bit. So if you have a uh, Dremel, it's gonna work fine. I use an oscillating tool or a multi-tool. They're really handy. Um, whatever method you have to get that little bit taken off, I'll go ahead and do that now. Now we can remove our bumper beam. It's going to be four 18 millimeter nuts on both sides of the bumper beam. Now hold on to that hardware. We're gonna be using that, but the bumper beam we will not be using. So um, you can discard that, you can save it for whatever reason, but it's not going back on the vehicle today. So 
So with those nuts taken off, we should be able to get our bumper beam taken off here. Now you may notice there is kind of a gasket material. It may stick to the bumper beam. It may stick onto the fascia. Uh, we are going to leave this on here. It's going to create a nice watertight seal between the hitch and the frame of the vehicle. Now before we get our hitch in place, this same wiring harness that we uh, took off that other bumper beam, it's on this little clip here. So to give us a little bit more space to be able to get our hitch in place, we're going to temporarily move that down. We're then going to slide our hitch up. And then we'll grab those nuts that we just took off and get these hand tightened down and come back with our torque wrench. Torque wrench settings are going to be found in the instruction manual. And if you need a torque wrench, we sell these here at eTrailer. You can also go to an auto parts store and generally rent them for free. But we're going to go through, make sure that they're all torqued down properly. That way it's not too tight, causing stress on our studs, but also it's not going to be loose uh, over time when using our hitch. With everything torqued down, we can go ahead and get our fascia bumper supports back in place. So we'll just snap this in and get those 10 millimeters put back on and we'll repeat on both sides. We can also go ahead and get our plastic caps put back on our studs. And we're gonna get ready to put our receiver block and mount it up, uh, but you are gonna wanna take that rubber plug out because your keys are gonna be located in there. There's gonna be a five digit number that's stamped on there. And in your instruction manual, you're, you're gonna see this sheet here, which will show you how to operate it, but also they have a key code here. That way, if you ever lose your key, you're gonna have this as a reference and you can get replacements made. Now, depending if you're doing just the rack receiver kit uh, or the towing package, it is gonna be slightly different as far as bolting up our receiver. Uh, if it's just the rack receiver kit for your cargo carriers and bike racks, it's gonna go just in place with your bolts uh, going through here. But ours is gonna be a little bit different because we have the towing package, we are gonna need to put our safety chain loops uh, in place as well as our bracket for our wiring. So uh, the way this works, you're gonna want these safety chains kind of facing back here and the handle, you're gonna wanna slide kind of in place. You may kind of have to maneuver it around to get that to slide in. And then we'll just put our receiver block in and as long as you have uh, the uh, passenger side towards this turn knob here in place, then we can get the rest of it in. So just slide this through, make sure it goes through the block. We'll go ahead and do the same for this side. And then we're gonna follow it up. So, uh, just make sure you have the proper orientation of your safety chain loops on this one. And then because we need to have a bracket for our wiring, we also have this L bracket. So this is gonna go uh, on one of our studs here, and then we're gonna follow it up with our nylon lock nuts. So our L bracket goes on this back one here, and we're gonna just make sure that it's kind of squared up because our bracket's gonna allow our wiring to face down, making it easier for us to plug in. I'm going to kind of just get this snugged up and then we're going to be coming back with our torque wrench and you are going to need a wrench on the other side. I always recommend using the torque wrench on the nut side. It's going to torque it down a little better. Um, so go through, use that torque setting and get these tightened up. Again, just make sure your bracket's sitting uh, kind of squared up here. Now, just a little tip here. It's going to want to spin as you torque this down. So to keep it in place, I'm just using an extension to kind of create a little spacer here to hold this in. And the wrench on the other side is wedged, so it'll, all I have to do here is hold and torque down. So with this in place, we should be able to get this bracket nice and squared up and still torqued down. Now with our receiver block put in place, if you're doing just the rack receiver kit and not the towing kit, you can go ahead and start putting your fascia back on in the reverse order. Just make sure you plug everything in place. Uh, now you are going to have those new rivets that you'll have to put in and I'll show you how to do that later on. But if you're doing the towing package kit, uh, we will be running the wiring right now. So hang with us. We'll get that figured out. And if you want to, you can skip ahead if you're just doing the rack receiver kit and I'll show you how to get that fascia put back up. Now our wiring installation is going to begin by pulling out this panel. Uh, it's just a little storage container and there's three plastic push pins. So we'll go ahead and get those taken out. This one might get a little bit tight here, but uh, with a trim panel tool or even a flat head, as long as you get that center button pulled out, the rest of it should come pretty easily. And this one's kind of tucked back here a little bit. And 
And we should be able to just pull this container out. Now do be careful, there's a clip here, so you kind of have to maneuver this a little bit to clear that. And now we're gonna be looking for the grommet to pass our wiring down. So go ahead, grab your wiring harness, and I'll show you where to find that. Now the easiest way to find the grommet is go on the outside and kind of tucked right above this heat shield on the passenger side. There's two grommets. One already has a harness coming out of it. We can leave that one alone. This one we're gonna pop out. You can probably get it with your fingers. And we're gonna be keeping this and drilling a hole through it to run our wires. But to make it a little bit easier to get your wires passed through here, you can shine a light on here and be able to see it from up top. And that way you know where to route your wires. Now we're just gonna be routing this section. This is gonna to go to the seven pole. So just grab this. Uh, wrapped portion and then we're going to just feed this through and then pull our slack So we'll go ahead and cut our hole on the grommet. You can use a 3 8 drill bit uh, Sometimes they kind of spin around on you. So obviously be careful You can also just use a utility knife just to cut a small X and that way you can run your wire through it um, now I'm going to be going back with some silicone here just to kind of keep it watertight But the main thing is just allowing that harness to be able to pass through the grommet and we'll be able to close that hole back up And then just make sure that this grommet's properly seated So just kind of work your way around the edges making sure that it's popped in And then we'll head back up and get the wet rest of our wiring hooked up now we are using the passive system. The active system uses the BMW module. So if you're using this system, continue to follow along with us. So we do need to eventually gain access to our battery for the 12 volt power supply. And also we're gonna be routing wires over to the driver's side. So open up your cargo carrier area here and we're gonna take this panel off and this is where our battery resides. So a eight millimeter socket should be able to take these out. So we'll go ahead and get this removed. Now, if you are using the active system, it is going to have to be programmed by a BMW dealership. So you're going to want to talk to them about your wiring when installing. Now, since we're doing the passive, we're going to be able to tie in to our 12 volt. As I mentioned under this, you're going to just lift this up. You can take the tools off if you want to, but we can just set this aside. Now you can see this is wide open. This is going to allow us to pass our wires over to the passenger side. So let's get those laid out and start running them. Now our left turn signal wire is going to be this yellow wire. So I'm going to route it through our opening and just kind of follow along. There's some factory wire loom that's uh, kind of tucked back here. The main thing is you just don't want it just loose around here. And then we'll make our way up to the plug where we separated from our taillight and we'll be doing a quick splice onto that. Now I passed my wires and I kind of used some of the uh, holes in the frame here just to kind of get our wires tucked in and to make it a little bit easier I'll be showing this connection on the outside um, we'll be quick splicing into here now there is this insulation so it's just kind of a sticky tape go ahead you're gonna to want to peel that back that way we can get our wire separated now the wire we're gonna be using is gonna be this black and it almost looks like, they call it black and white, but it almost has a yellow tint to it. Um, now I am gonna be splicing this in a little bit further back. You don't want it right up against that plug. Um, and as far as excess wire, uh, I cut off just a small amount, but you don't wanna cut yourself too short. You can always tuck the extra. And these quick splices are really nice. You're just simply gonna run these through these little channeled sections. And I kind of just press it in a little bit with my finger and that's going to bite into that insulation and as we pressure this down it's going to bite into the wire and get to the metal so we have that nice contact here so I'm going to again scoot this back a little and then once you have those properly aligned just swing this over here and you should get it to snap into place that's how you know it's made that connection, but double check, just make sure that you have them in the proper channel. Sometimes they can go a little crooked. And then once you kind of get it to snap, you can go back with a pair of pliers and just kind of crimp that down a little bit better. And once it's snapped in, it should kind of sit flush there, that new snap portion. So just make sure that you have that properly pressed in. 
So now we'll grab our green and brown wire and we're gonna be doing the same thing, tying into our plug. Now this one I, I'm gonna show you in here. I didn't have quite as much wiring to work with, so I peeled that back. Uh, we'll take our green wire and that's gonna to go to the black and gray and our brown wire is gonna to attach to the yellow and gray. So go ahead and make those quick splices. I've made my connection here to our corresponding wires and if you want to you can put a little electrical tape just wrap, wrap it around uh, your connectors that's kind of up to you. Now when it comes to our red wire, our blue wire and purple wire we're not actually going to be using these. This vehicle doesn't have a separate brake light circuit uh, it's just not the way that uh, it functions so we won't be using this. Our blue and purple are going to be for a reverse lockout for a surge brake so if you're pulling a boat trailer um, and then you also have your blue and that's going to be for a brake controller if you plan on using one of those So if you're doing a brake controller, you are going to need to tie this into it But for this application we are not so I'm going to just bundle these wires up uh, and we can tuck those in So now this brings us to our white and black wire I went ahead and trimmed my white wire back This is going to be our ground and we're going to be using this factory stud to mount this up We have this nice little uh, fork terminal here, so we'll just you, can, you don't have to cut all the excess wire off, it's up to you, but just to make it a little bit cleaner. So go ahead, strip that back. And this is a, an important step here is really when you crimp this down, double check to make sure that it's really on there. Um, you don't want this coming loose because your wiring's not gonna work. So just kind of give it a quick tug just to make sure. And then we'll take this little stud uh, the nut is right there, just a 10 millimeter should loosen that up. And if we get that loose enough, we should be able to uh, just slide that fork in and then tighten it back down. I'm just gonna route it kind of behind some of my wire harnesses here, just again to kind of keep it nice and clean. And then tuck that in there, and then we can tighten it back down. So now our black wire is going to go to our battery. So we'll just run this kind of how we ran our yellow wire. And then we'll just open up our positive terminal cap here. Just a little tab holding that in place. And then we have our stud right here. Uh, that one looks to be, uh, could be a 10 millimeter, so we'll get that taken off here. And before we just tie into that 12 volt power, I'm gonna cut off the extra wire that I have here and we're gonna put our fuse holder in place. Now, the fuse is gonna be in the fuse holder. Take that out. We don't want power going through this until we have it completely hooked up. And it's pretty nice. They already put a butt connector on here as well as a ring terminal. So that's gonna make it easy. We'll just strip this back and crimp this down. And sometimes just for a little extra bite, you can strip a little bit extra back and then peel your wires over and that way it has a little more to bite onto. Now take that ring terminal and you'll see this part is flush or flat. That's going to go onto our stud where we took our hardware off. And then we'll get our hardware put back on and tighten that down. Now our cap may or may not go back on here just because we have our new wire there. But uh, there we go. Now that we have this all tied in, if you want to, you can go through and kind of just zip tie everything up, make it look nice and clean and kind of just so it's not loose in here. Um, Hold off on putting your fuse in because we still need to make the connection to our seven pole. And while just kind of cleaning up my wires, make sure that you get your module kind of zip tied up. I'm again, just using some of the factory wires that are already here. Um, and then there's some holes here on the side. Uh, that's just gonna protect it from rattling around in the back and prolong the lifespan of it. Going ahead and just kind of zip tied up our wire to that one that we took off the bumper beam, just to kind of keep those secure made my way over here where I passed our wiring down towards our bracket. 
So that's gonna allow our bracket to sit right here and then our plug is going to face vertical like this. Now in the bracket, there is a little slit here that allows us to pass our wires through after we attach this. So we'll just make these attachment points first. And we do need to take out this center portion um, and that's gonna allow us to get our wires in and then attach it to the back side. So this screw right here, take that out, that locks it in place. There's also one on the other side. So you don't have to back them out completely, um, but enough to where you should be able to get that center section to pop out. And once we have those loose enough, our center section should come out. We're also going to loosen up this grub screw here. And this is what tightens our wires up uh, once everything's in place, but we do want to feed this through. So just back this out, take your wire harness and you can feed these through. And don't be afraid if you have a little bit of extra pull through, that's not a big deal. So these are where we're gonna tie into our terminals and these are just a series of Phillips screws that have a plate, but we do need to strip back our ends and that way we can wrap it around to get a nice solid contact point. So I'll strip all these back and then I'm gonna attach these and then I'll go through and show you exactly where they go. Now the instruction manual lays this out really nicely and you're using the slot keyway as your reference mark. So you're just gonna go around and get your corresponding colors in place. Uh, now, as far as tightening these down, you don't have to get crazy here. You don't wanna damage the wires. So once you back the plate out enough, sometimes you gotta kinda of, uh, flick it open a little bit to get your wires in, but you just kinda of slide that down. And if you can hook it around the screw, awesome. Um, but the plate should tighten down on it pretty well. Just make sure you don't have any loose straggler wires kinda of going to the other terminals. That way you're not getting power going to other wires. And then as far as tightening, you don't have to, again, you don't wanna damage the wires, just make sure it's snug and then just kinda of give it a quick tug, make sure that they're all good. Now before we put this back in um, to the plug housing, I am gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of dielectric grease here. It's gonna help with corrosion long-term um, and just kinda of keep a little bit of moisture damage from occurring and just protect the plug for the lifespan of it. So now at this point we can slide our plug back in and that keyway should be kind of at the uh, six o'clock position. So just make sure that that slots in. You'll see that it should kind of draw to where it's all flush in here. If you need to, you can kind of rotate it around. Now to help align this, you can see uh, that bottom slot is where that keyway is. And these other slots on the side should align with your screws. So just kind of get those aligned. And then once that's sitting flush, we'll go ahead and we'll get our Phillips heads on the sides, tighten down. Now we're also gonna tighten down our screw, our grub screw here, and that's gonna close up this little section here. Again, kind of just tightening up the wires, make sure they don't pull out, and also start to kind of at least protect water from going in. Now this plug sitting vertical, I don't want water to trickle down in there and slowly break down the plug. So what I'm gonna do is just take some electrical tape and wrap it around the whole thing. And that way it's gonna create a nice seal for it. Now we'll take our bracket and where that slit is, you can slide uh, that wiring through. And we're gonna bolt this up. We want our plug to kind of open up towards the uh, forward side of the car. So just have it in this orientation here. And we're gonna pass our hardware in. It should align with our bracket. So we have our Phillips and we also have our nuts that we're gonna just go ahead and get tightened down. And then just go ahead and do that for the remainder of the three. Now we'll get our bracket mounted up and you may need to pull some of the excess wire harness up um, just cause that insulation that it has kind of makes it rigid, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this lined up with our bracket. And you can choose to mount it um, probably on the inside. Seems like it's gonna work best as, as far as clearance goes. Uh, we wanna make sure that we can still open up our plug all the way. So I think this will work better for us. And then we'll just use the hardware that's included in the kit. And we'll just pass this through. We have our flat washer on the front here. Back side, I'm gonna put a star washer and then follow it up with the nut and then we'll repeat on the other side.
And with that tightened down, you can go ahead and any of that excess wire you can zip tie up and then we can put our fuse back in the fuse holder. Now before we get everything back together, we are gonna power this up by putting our fuse in the holder and we need to test to make sure that it's working. Now to test our light functions, I'm using a seven pole tester that we have available here at E-Trailer and these will light up as I run through the light sequence. Now you're gonna wanna do this, uh, if you have your trailer uh, with a seven pole, you can also hook it up to that and have someone in the driver's seat going through the light sequence and checking it on the back of the trailer. So starting off, I'll do my running lights. Next, I'll do my left turn signal, my right turn signal, and then finally my brakes. And the light that's been on constantly is gonna be that 12 volt power, so we know we're, get, we're getting a battery signal. Now where we have our grommet spliced in and where we've ran our wires through, just to kind of seal it up just a little bit better, I'm gonna use some black RTV silicone and just kind of go around this, and that way we're nice and watertight again. Now with everything working properly on our wiring, we can go ahead, get all of our interior put back again. Good time to zip tie up any wires and make it nice and clean. Um, and then as far as the fascia goes, it really does go on in the reverse order. And then when we get to that rivet point, I'll show you how to do that. Now don't forget to plug your fascia back in uh, before getting it all snapped into place. And you are gonna probably have to have the hatch kind of at a 45 to be able to get those clips to snap in. So just having an extra set of hands handy is gonna make it a lot easier. Now don't forget to put your eight millimeter screws back in the side. You're gonna line your tabs up and just kind of push this in. And once popped in, we should have everything aligned as far as our fender liner and our wheel well arch to our fascia. Now these are gonna be just a push pin style. So if you need to, you can fit the, just the bottom portion in, just slide those. And then once you press these in, it's gonna widen out and hold that in place. And sometimes these can be a little bit tricky. Uh, what I recommend, you can grab something that's uh, decently flat and hard and use that to press these in and they should pop in pretty simply. So by hand, I was able to get about that far in this one. So just using a ratchet that I have here, I'm just gonna push square on it. It should open up. Might take a little bit of pressure. There we go. Once that's popped in, we'll just go ahead and repeat for the remainder of them. So now that everything's back in place, all we have to do is pull off the rubber cap on the driver's side, put our key in, and that should unlock our latch. So it is spring loaded, so once it's unlocked, that's gonna extend out, and you'll be able to just twist the handle back until it locks. You can then take your ball mount or your receiver uh, and just kind of slide this up in there. And then just push straight up. And once you kind of hear that pop in place, that handle should click in, and then you can go ahead, push that key in, twist it, lock it in place, and then you're ready to go. And that was a look and installation of the Stealth Hitch Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2016 BMW X5M.